The next item on the agenda is um, an information item to provide an update on the implementation of recommendations from the Tritium Studies Project Synthesis Report. Uh, this outline in CMD 17, M48, and M48.8. So I understand we have some representative here from uh, CNL, Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, and we are available to help. Uh, but in the meantime, I understand that uh, Mr. Rinke, you will make the presentation. Over to you. Good afternoon, President Binder, members of the Commission. My name is Michael Rinker, and I am the Director General for the Directorate of Environmental and Radiation Protection and Assessment. With me today are Dr. Nana Kwamina, an Environmental Protection Officer with the Health Sciences and Environmental Compliance Division, Ms. Julie Burt, a Radiation and Health Science Officer of the same division, Dr. Nadira Santamon, a Senior Analyst from the Laboratory Services Division, and Mr. Elias Dagger from the Environmental Risk Assessment Division. We will be sharing today's presentation. We also have other CNSC staff available to answer any questions. The purpose of today's presentation is to summarize CNSC staff's work on the Tritium Studies Project. Based on the research that CNSC staff have conducted to meet the objectives of the project, staff conclude that adequate provisions have been made through existing regulatory mechanisms for the protection of Canadians from exposure to tritium releases. CNSC staff is requesting that the Commission endorse staff's conclusion that the intent of the Tritium Studies project has now been fulfilled. Please note that there is an error in the title of Table B2 of Appendix B of CMD 17M48. The title of Table B2 should read, Total Estimated Dose to a Child Receptor, Not an Infant Receptor. The total HTO dose summed from all pathways and should be corrected in Tables B2, B3, and B4 of Appendix B specifically. For Table B2, the total HTO dose, considering all pathways, should read 3.41 times 10 to the minus 2 millisieverts per year. For Table B3, the total HTO dose, considering all pathways, should read 3.45 times 10 to the minus 2 millisieverts per year. For Table B4, the total HTO dose, considering all pathways, should read 2.87 times 10 to the minus 2 millisieverts per year. Dr. Kwamina will now continue with today's presentation. Good afternoon, members of the Commission. For the record, my name is Dr. Nana Kwamina, and I am an Environmental Protection Officer here at the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. To begin the presentation, we will present a brief history of the CNSC's Tritium Studies Project. This will be followed by a description of the main chemical forms, sources, and uses of tritium in Canada to provide context for why the CNSC regulates tritium releasing facilities and activities. The main part of the presentation will summarize the research studies and initiatives that CNSC staff have undertaken in implementing the recommendations of the Tritium Studies Project. Staff will also present the achievements of other CNSC tritium-related initiatives that staff have been involved in to date. We will conclude the presentation by outlining how the work completed by staff has met the objectives of the project. In January 2007, the Commission directed CNSC staff to initiate a series of research studies on tritium releases in Canada. This directive was documented in the record of proceeding, including reasons for decision for SRB Technologies relicensing hearing for the renewal of a Class 1B operating license. At that time, tritium levels in the environment were at levels that were not expected due to, due to the operation of the facility. It was determined that the facility was not doing enough to control its emissions. The Commission concluded that the regulatory framework in place was sufficient to protect people living around nuclear facilities. 
the Commission also concluded that additional research on tritium releases in Canada was needed to increase current knowledge and improve the regulatory oversight of tritium releasing facilities in Canada. It should be noted that since the initiation of the project, SRB Technologies has implemented a number of control measures and best practices to reduce their airborne emissions of tritium. Following the request from the Commission, CNSC staff initiated the Tritium Studies Project later in 2007. Between 2007 and 2010, CNSC staff engaged in a number of research studies to address the objectives of the Tritium Studies Project. In June 2010, CNSC staff presented the results of the project to the Commission as part of the Tritium Studies Project Synthesis Report. The synthesis report included a summary of staff's research along with staff's recommendations to improve environmental protection aspects of the CNSC's regulatory framework. In January 2013, CNSC staff provided the Commission with an update on the work that CNSC staff have been involved in in implementing the recommendations of the project since the publication of the synthesis report in 2010. None of the recommendations of the project were closed at the 2013 update. CNSC staff indicated that it would provide an update to the Commission once the remaining research initiatives had been completed. Today's presentation summarizes the work that CNSC staff have carried out or funded to date to address the objectives of the Tritium Studies Project. The purpose of today's presentation is to demonstrate that through staff's work, the objectives of the project have been met. The following set of slides provides background information on the chemical forms, sources, and uses of tritium to provide context for why the CNSC regulates tritium releasing facilities. Tritium occurs in the atmosphere in the same chemical forms as hydrogen. The radiological half-life of tritium is 12 and a half years. Tritium in the gaseous form is referred to as tritiated gas or HT. Once it is in the air, HT rapidly mixes with air moisture to form water molecules known as tritiated water or HTO. HTO can mix with water in the body and other environmental media such as soil, plants and animals. HT is less harmful to people than HTO because it is only weakly absorbed by the body. Organically bound tritium, or OBT, is another form of tritium that is found in biological systems. OBT is formed from the exchange of hydrogen with carbon-based molecules through different metabolic processes. The different forms of tritium can also be distinguished based on the time spent in the body. HTO clears from the body four times faster than OBT. In an adult, o HTO has a biological half-life of 10 days, while OBT's biological half-life is 40 days. The biological half-life of HT is also 10 days, as this accounts for the 0.1% of HT that is converted to HTO. As a result of this difference in the biological half-lives, OBT has a greater dose consequence compared to HTO. In general, tritium is one of the major contributors to radiological dose at nuclear power plants and tritium processing facilities. Tritium is mainly produced as a byproduct of the operation of CANDU and research reactors. CANDU reactors use heavy water as a moderator. The operation of the reactor results in the formation of tritium. Tritium removal facilities, such as the one at the Darlington facility, recover the tritium produced by the reactors. Some of the recovered tritium is used at tritium processing facilities, such as SRB Technologies, to produce non-electrical, self-luminescent, military and aviation products. The operation of CANDU reactors, along with the industry chain of using tritium to make non-electrical self-luminescent lights, is unique to Canada. These are some of the main reasons why CNSC staff are leading experts in the fields of tritium regulation, 
the behavior of tritium in the terrestrial environment, and tritium radiobiology and dosimetry. The CNSC regulates and monitors environmental releases of tritium from nuclear reactors and tritium processing facilities. Staff also undertake independent mo environmental monitoring to ensure that the public and the environment are protected. Environmental protection at nuclear facilities is conducted in accordance with the Nuclear Safety and Control Act and its associated regulations. The environmental protection regulatory framework ensures that nuclear facilities are operating to protect the health and safety of people and the environment. The CNSC's regulatory framework is informed by research studies as well as national and international guidance and standards. Doses to members of the public are often estimated because they are too low to be measured. The doses are estimated using measured concentrations of nuclear substances like tritium in environmental samples. HTO is measured directly in environmental samples. In contrast, OBT is often modeled rather than measured due to its complexity of analysis. Specifically, an OBT to HTO ratio of 0.7 as recommended by CSA group standard N288.1 guidelines for calculating derived release limits for radioactive material in airborne and liquid effluents for normal operation of nuclear facilities is used in dose calculations. This value represents the mean of the values previously observed in the literature. Doses to members of the public from tritium releases are between 0 0.0001 and 0 0.01 millisieverts per year, which is a small fraction of the public dose limit of one millisievert per year. The figure on this slide illustrates how doses to members of the public living around nuclear facilities that emit tri tritium, as represented by the blue cube, are a small fraction of the public dose limit, as represented by the orange cube, and natural background, as denoted by the larger green cube. The dose to a member of the public was calculated by CNSC staff using data from the CNSC's independent environmental monitoring program. Further details regarding the data and the assumptions used in staff's calculation will be provided later in the presentation. Staff will now provide an update on the status of the recommendations from the Tritium Studies Project. The Tritium Studies Project identified certain areas related to environmental protection as requiring further study. Therefore, CNSC staff made recommendations to enhance the environmental protection with respect to tritium within the existing regulatory framework. The first recommendation included continuing to investigate the environmental behavior of tritium, especially organically bound tritium, and to determine the resulting dose consequences. In order to address the lack of precision in tritium levels in air using active and passive air samplers, CNSC staff recommended that work be undertaken to identify the factors that, ne that are needed for adequate calibration of active and passive tritium in air samplers. CNSC staff recommended that groundwater protection principles at class one facilities be addressed. This arose because although regulatory requirements protect human health, past practices have not provided a sufficient level of protection of groundwater resources outside the license boundary of certain nuclear facilities. Lastly, as part of the Tritium Studies Project, staff recommended that additional studies in radiobiology and dosimetry be conducted to reduce uncertainty. The following slides will demonstrate how staff have addressed the recommendations of the project. The environmental fate of tritium in soil and vegetation study was carried out to address the recommendation on the variability in the OBT to HTO ratios that had been observed in environmental samples. 
Research for the environmental fate study was conducted near the Darlington and Gentilly de nuclear power plants and two tritium processing facilities, SRB Technologies and Shield Source Incorporated. The work was conducted during the 2008 and 2009 growing seasons. The green dots on the map represent the nuclear facilities around which the sampling took place. These sites were selected due to the differing nature of their operations and the availability of locally grown vegetation. Environmental samples of soil, garden produce, animal fodder, and animal products were obtained and analyzed for HTO and OBT. The OBT to HTO ratios observed in this work were greater than the recommended ratio in the CSA group standard N288.1. CNSC staff compared the ingestion dose for a member of the public consuming vegetation with the recommended ratio and using the maximum OBT to HGO ratio observed in this work. The dose from the higher OBT ratio was approximately five times higher. From a regulatory perspective, the calculated doses in both cases was a small fraction of the public dose limit and below doses known to cause health effects. The results of the environmental fate of tritium in soil and vegetation study were published in the Journal of the Environmental Radioactivity in an article co-authored by CNSC and University of Ottawa staff. In 2012, CNSC funded and actively participated in a follow-up project entitled Tritium Transport in the Terrestrial Environment. The follow-up project was carried out during the 2012 growing season near SRB Technologies, a tritium processing facility in Pembroke, Ontario. The objectives of the project were twofold. First, to understand the conditions that led to the higher than expected ratios using an experimental approach with more environmental monitoring. And secondly, to increase the CNSC's laboratory's analytical capabilities by conducting parallel tritium analysis using split samples and to provide quality assurance. The results of the tritium transport in the terrestrial environment study confirmed the elevated OBT to HTO ratios that had been observed in staff's previous work and in the literature. The results of this work were presented by CNSC staff at the Third International Conference on Radioecology and Environmental Radioactivity and were also published in the Journal of Environmental Radioactivity. The results of these two studies support the growing body of evidence that OBT to HDO ratios in environmental samples may be higher than those used in environmental transfer models. Existing environmental transfer models may not take into account less studied environmental transfer processes or account for the non-equilibrium state of actual operations. Further research is needed in different environmental media as well as in different locations on the factors that lead to the higher than expected ratio in order to reach a scientific consensus. This consensus, if reached, may lead to the revision of transfer models. CSA Group Standard N288.1 is reviewed on a five-year cycle. CNSC staff sit on the technical committee and will ensure that OBT-related matters are appropriately addressed. The results obtained from both studies do not impact the overall risk to health since doses to members of the public from tritium-releasing facilities are low. CNSC staff have also been involved in other research studies and initiatives to address staff's recommendation on the variability of the OBT to HTO ratios in environmental samples. CNSC staff have participated in the International Atomic Energy Agency's Modeling in Data for Radiological Impact Assessment, or the MADARIA program. CNSC staff have been actively participating in the Medaria's working group that develops, tests, and compares models for tritium releases. As part of the Medaria program, 
CNSC staff collaborated with staff from the Japanese Atomic Energy Agency, as well as staff from the Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, on a modeling intercomparison to understand the role of HTO transfer from the soil to the leaf and its effect on the OBT to HTO ratio in vegetation. The results of this collaborative research were published in the peer-reviewed literature. In another initiative, CNSC staff hosted a three-day tritium workshop in April 2016. The workshop brought together scientists from the CNSC, the Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, l'Institut de Radioprotection et de Sûreté Nucléaire, or IRSN, and the University of Ottawa. As part of the workshop, the participants shared results and information on the various research projects underway at their respective institutes and discussed topics of mutual interest. Active and passive air samplers are used by CNSC licensees for measuring tritium in air. The results from both samplers can sig differ significantly. As a result, there are questions regarding the accuracy and the precision of the two methods. A comparison of active and passive tritium in air sampling was included as an objective of the tritium transport in the terrestrial environment research project. The University of Ottawa developed a tritium in air sampler as shown by the photo in the middle of the slide. This was validated using an Atomic Energy of Canada limited air sampler in the photo shown on the right. The data that was collected was fit for purpose and used for research that was published in the peer-reviewed literature. The CANDU Owners Group has also investigated this research topic. The work in this area has quantified the uncertainties with respect to tritium in air sampling and no further work on this area is planned. Tritium in air monitoring is conducted by the licensee other federal and provincial de departments, such as Health Canada and the Ontario Ministry of Labour, as well as by CNSC staff as part of the Independent Environmental Monitoring Program. And this provides verification of the tritium, sorry, verification of the concentrations of tritium in air around nuclear facilities. From a regulatory perspective, people living around nuclear facilities that emit tritium are protected since the inhalation dose estimated using either type of tritium and air sampler method is a small fraction of the public dose. As part of the tritium studies project, CNSC staff were directed to enhance the regulatory framework for groundwater protection. CNSC staff provided an update to the commission in January 2013 on two discussion papers that incorporated Principles for Groundwater Protection. The first discussion paper entitled Protection of Groundwater at Nuclear Facilities in Canada addressed the integration of groundwater protection within the CNSC's overall environmental protection framework. The key aspects of this document were formalized as guidance as part of the CSA Group Standard N288.7 groundwater protection at class one nuclear facilities and uranium mines and mills. These principles were also incorporated in CNSC regulatory document 2.9.1, environmental protection, environmental principles, assessment and protection measures. The second discussion paper is entitled, process for establishing release limits and action levels at nuclear facilities. It addressed establishing release limits, action levels, and effluent design objectives for radionuclides and hazardous substances released from nuclear facilities. It also recognized that groundwater is a valued ecosystem component that should be protected and considered when designing nuclear facilities. Requirements and guidance for controlling releases to the environment which includes consideration of groundwater as an end use to be protected, will be incorporated as part of a future CNSC regulatory document. I will now turn over the presentation to Ms. Julie Burt to address the recommendation for additional studies in radiobiology and dosimetry. 
Thank you. Julie Burt for the record. I am a radiation and health sciences officer at the C and the CNSC's point of contact for the studies discussed on the next four slides. The CNSC Tritium Studies Project, published in 2010, included an independent, comprehensive review and assessment of radiation protection principles and practices related to tritium. The results and conclusions of this work was previously reported to the Commission. The recommendations from this project were that although doses from exposures to tritium are low, further research may be beneficial for epidemiological studies and for individual dosimetry to confirm that biokinetic models are adequate and to reduce uncertainties. In response to staff's recommendation, the studies on the toxicity of tritium, effects of low-dose tritium and gamma radiation project was developed and led by Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, or CNL. The project will be referred to as the Toxicity of Tritium Project for the remainder of this presentation. The CNL project is a multi-year collaboration between CNL, the CANDU Owners Group, IRSN, and the CNSC. CNSC's role in the project included providing funding as well as providing input in project design and data analysis for certain tasks. The main purpose of the CNL project was to provide an in-depth analysis of the toxicity of tritium by investigating the relative toxicity of low energy, beta, and gamma radiation. The project consisted of six project tasks. Five of the tasks evaluated the toxicity of tritium by looking at cell and tissue responses in mice. An additional task evaluated the toxicity of tritium by considering the development of cancer over the life, entire lifespan of mice. The lifespan study includes exposing 3,600 mice to different doses and forms of tritium and gamma radiation. This study is ongoing as it is a long-range study as the average mouse lifespan is two and a half years. ICRP biokinetic models state that HTO and OBT behave differently once taken into the body. Specifically, the ICRP biokinetic model predicts that HTO behaves like water, and therefore HTO is homogeneously distributed throughout the body. This same model predicts that OBT is di distributed heterogeneously in body tissues and has a longer retention time. The results obtained by CNL were in contrast to the existing ICRP biokinetic model for OBT. The CNL toxicity of tritium study found that HTO and OBT had similar uptake, retention, and excretion patterns. In other words, OBT behaved like ingested water. The significance of these results may influence the way a tritium dose is calculated. Additional studies are needed to confirm the results obtained by CNL. From a regulatory perspective, these results are unlikely to impact overall risk to health, since doses from tritium releasing facilities are a small fraction of a person's total dose and are very low. As mentioned previously, the ongoing work of the toxicity of tritium study is looking at the development of cancer over the entire lifespan of mice that are exposed to HTO, OBT, and gamma radiation. The results from this study, once completed, in conjunction with the other tasks, will contribute to defining the RBE for tritium. The RBE is a concept used to compare different types of radiation in terms of the same biological effect. There are many RBE values published in the literature. The variation exists because the RBE of tritium depends on whether X-rays or gamma rays are used as the reference. All of the studies inform the appropriate choice of a radiation weighting factor that permits the calculation of the special unit of dose called the millisievert. The millisievert can be used for protection from all types of radiation, not just beta radiation from tritium. If requested, CNSC staff can provide an update to the Commission on the results of the Toxicity of Tritium project once the entire project is complete. As a result of the work carried out by staff, the recommendations of the project have been addressed. Specifically, research has been conducted investigating the variability in the OBT-HTO ratios in environmental samples. Studies have identified uncertainties in tritium in air sampling using both active and passive samplers. Groundwater protection principles have been incorporated in CNSC regulatory documents and CSA group standards. Studies have been conducted to provide an in-depth analysis of the toxicity of tritium. CNSC staff conclude that the work that has been carried out to date has met the intention of the recommendations and that the objectives of the project have been met. 
I will now pass the presentation to Dr. Nara Saint-Emma. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the commission. My name is Dr. Nadra Sentama, and I'm a senior analyst at the CNSC. The following section provides an overview of CNSC laboratories' activities for the analysis of different forms of tritium in environmental samples. As part of the Tritium Industrial Environment Project, which was completed in 2012, the CNSC laboratory developed methodologies and acquired equipment for the analysis and processing of OBT in environmental samples. OBT samples are typically prepared by combusting a dry portion of an environmental sample in an oxygen chamber, as shown here, followed by liquid scintillation counting of the, dry, of the collected sample. The image on the left of this slide is the PAR oxygen chamber that was implemented at the CNSC laboratory in 2012. The image on the right is a new type of oxygen chamber that the CNSC laboratory acquired in 2015. As the first case study of the new equipment, the CNSC staff and the manufacturer of the equipment collaborated and recently published an article in the peer-reviewed journal on the use and implementation of the new equipment. With the expansion of the analytical capability, since 2012, the CNSC laboratory has analyzed the two major forms of tritium in over 2,500 samples in support of CNSC-funded research projects, national and international intercomparison exercises, and the CNSC's independent environmental monitoring program. CNSC staff remain up to date with the current methods and techniques for tritium analysis by, by participating in national and international working groups. Since 2012, the CNSC staff has participated in an international OBT analysis working group. The group includes members from different countries, including Canada, France, United Kingdom, Romania, South Korea, China, and Japan. The working group meets annually to discuss the improvements in the analysis of OBT and to organize intercomparison exercises. A member of the CNSC laboratory has been part of the working group since its inception and has served as a member of the scientific committee since 2014. The CNSC laboratory has successfully participated in all the intercomparison exercises organized by the group since 2012. The results of the first intercomparison exercise was published in the Journal of Environmental Radioactivity, co-authored by CNSC staff. CNSC staff also participated in an intercomparison field study campaign with the ERSN staff. The study was carried out near Sarbi Technologies in Pembroke, Ontario for a two-week period during the summer of 2013. The objective of the field campaign was to compare the methods used for sampling and measuring different forms of tritium. The results obtained by ERSN and CNSC were in good agreement for HTO measurements for tritium in air and in grass samples. Differences in OBT activity concentration results of some of the grass samples were noted and investigated. The two laboratories concluded that the differences found were due to inhomogeneity of the split samples and not the analytical measurements. The research collaborative work for the field campaign was published in peer-reviewed journal co-authored by the CNSC staff. As a result of CNSC Laboratories' active participation in the area of OBT analysis, in September 2016, CNSC Laboratory was invited to host the practical training workshop as part of the IEA's Analytical Laboratories for the Measurement of Environmental Radioactivity, or ALMERA. ALMERA is a worldwide network of analytical laboratories that are coordinated by the IEA's environmental laboratories. The CNSC hosted workshop focused on various sample preparation methods and on the analysis of OBT in food samples using liquid scintillation counting. Participants from 14 countries attended the hands-on training. 
the comprehensive training provided would enable the participants to implement the acquired techniques and methodologies in their country's analytical laboratories. I will now pass the presentation to Mr. Elias Dagger. Good afternoon. My name is Elias Dagger, and I am in the Environmental Risk Assessment Division of the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. Tritium is monitored in different environmental media as part of licensees' as environmental monitoring programs. Tritium, in the form of HDO, is routinely monitored in air, water, and food around facilities that release tritium. However, the concentration of OBT in the environment is traditionally estimated from the amount of HTO measured using the OBT to HTO ratio. OBT is being monitored in some environmental media at a number of CNSC regulated facilities. The CNSC has been monitoring tritium in the form of HTO and OBT around nuclear facilities as part of CNSC's Independent Environmental Monitoring Program, or IEMP. The IMP is a regulatory tool that complements the CNSC's ongoing compliance verification program. The IMP involves taking samples from publicly accessible areas around nuclear facilities and measuring and analyzing uh, the amount of radiological and hazardous substances in those samples. The sampling and analysis is conducted independently by CNSC staff with the results posted on CNSC's external website. Since 2012, IEMP sampling campaigns have been completed around facilities that release tritium, such as research and tritium processing facilities, as well as nuclear power plants. Samples analyzed include air, soil, and food, such as meat and vegetables. In all cases, the IEMP results confirm that people and the environment around these facilities are protected. This figure displays an environmental transport and multi-pathway exposure model. It shows the many pathways that humans may be exposed to tritium in the environment. This exposure may be from natural background or due to releases from the facility through the atmosphere, surface water, and the ground. For example, an exposure pathway to tritium may be from the inhalation of air or from the consumption of fish. Using the data collected as part of the IEMP, CNSC staff calculated the public dose due to multiple uh, exposure pathways to a hypothetical infant, child, and adult receptor. The objective of this dose calculation was to demonstrate that doses due to tritium exposure to members of the public living around tritium releasing facilities are low and below the public dose limit of one millisievert per year. Furthermore, the dose calculation was based on the maximum tritium concentration measured for each environmental media and food analyzed throughout the IMP to date. It is therefore not specific to any nuclear facility. This approach allows for the simplistic, high level and conservative dose estimates. This slide provides the results of the dose assessment. As we can see, the highest dose was received by the adult receptor. This was a result of the higher rate of consumption of water and higher inhalation rates by an adult. Due to the very conservative assumptions used, these results are about three times higher than the estimated doses to public reported annually by the licensees. This represents a very conservative dose estimate. This figure shows the percent contribution of each exposure pathway to the total tritium dose to an adult receptor of 0.035 millisieverts per year. Exposure from air immersion and inhalation were found to be the major contributors to the total tritium dose at about 70%. The second highest contributor to dose was ingestion of water at about 28.5%. Ingestion of food contributed to only about 1.5% of the total tritium dose. And only 0.5% of the total tritium dose came from OBT through the food ingestion pathway. Even at higher OBT to HTO ratios, the dose is not expected to change significantly as the total contribution from OBT in food is a small percentage of the overall dose. In summary, the research projects conducted as part of the Tritium Studies Report have expanded the CNSC's laboratory capabilities in the analysis of tritium in environmental samples. This has allowed the lab to support CNSC-funded research projects participate in national and international intercomparisons, 
and analyze samples as part of the CNSC's independent environmental monitoring program. CNSC staff collect and analyze environmental samples around facilities that emit tritium. The results were used to calculate the dose to a hypothetical member of the public using conservative assumptions and the calculated dose supports the conclusion that members of the public exposed to tritium releases are protected as doses are a fraction of the public dose limit and are below doses known to cause health effects. I will now pass the presentation back to Mr. Rinker to conclude this afternoon's presentation. Michael Rinker for the record, I will now conclude staff's presentation. Key aspects of the work that has been conducted as part of the Tritium Studies Project and other related studies have been communicated to members of the public and the scientific community. The project has communicated during two public information sessions and through eight CNSC information documents. CNSC staff have also published seven articles in the peer-reviewed literature and one chapter in the Encyclopedia of Sustainability Science and Technology. Additional publications are still expected from ongoing work. Abstracts from staff's research and summaries of different initiatives are posted on the CNSC's external webpage. Results of the IEMP around tritium releasing facilities are also up to date with the 2016 sampling campaign results posted on the CNSC's external webpage. In addition to the publications that were produced as a result of the Tritium Studies Project, CNSD staff have also contributed to international documents on the tritium science. For example, most recently, CNSC staff were acknowledged by the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation, or UNSCEAR, 2016 report for their work on preparing the first draft of the Annex on the biological effects of selected internal emitters, including tritium. The CNSC information documents and peer-reviewed publications are evidence of the CNSC staff's decade-long engagement in research regarding the behavior of tritium in the environment, as well as the radiobiology and dosimetry <coughs> of tritium. <coughs> Based on the work presented here and previously to the Commission, CNSC staff maintain that adequate provisions have been made through existing regulatory mechanisms for the protection of Canadians from exposure to tritium releases. CNSC staff are of the opinion that the project has met its overall objectives of increasing the information available regarding tritium releases and enhancing the regulatory oversight of tritium releasing facilities. CNSC staff will continue to remain abreast of the latest developments in tritium science in support of the regulatory oversight of tritium releasing facilities. CNSC staff request that the Commission endorse CNSC staff's conclusion that the intent of the project has been fulfilled. This concludes CNSC staff's presentation. We are now available to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you.